Good morning, Delray Beach. I'm Amanda. And I'm Ryan. And this morning, even in spite of the rain, is fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> well, everything cleared up right before the show, right? It knew it was up. Delray was like, we're going to go to the Sunday house and celebrate this beautiful community. I got to stop. <laughs> and I mean, like, come on. Like, I just keep staring around like a child, but this is so beautiful. Well, that's good. That's good payback for all the shows we've done talking about our beautiful city. It's nice that the first time we're back together yes. in person, in the same room, yes. next to each other, uh, that we get a little love from our, from our city. Oh, my gosh. And I was thinking about it this morning. It has been a year since we've been in the same room. Yes. A year. I mean, like, simultaneously the fastest year ever and the slowest year ever. I think it's been like six <laughs> years, but also six minutes. Like, yes. trying to wrap my head around time. I don't know. Do you feel that way, or is it just me? I, I have no idea what month it is. <laughs> No, you know? no. It's like nearly April, I think. Yes, yes. Right? So when someone gives me a date and says, hey, make sure you prepare. Can you do this? I'm like, oh, yeah, that's, you know, like a month away. <laughs> it's, it's like tomorrow. three, yeah, it's like three <laughs> days away. And I'm like, oh, okay, I got to be there. Got it. It's so true. <laughs> and I just, I mean, it feels weird, but good to be like back in the world now that people are, you know, being a little bit more comfortable after getting shots yeah. and everything. But um, I'm just so happy to see people again. Yes. So yeah. Happy. Speaking of shots, I got mine the other day. Yes. And I could barely lift my left arm. Really? It's, it, yeah, it's a little sensitive. That's so. what a lot of people are saying. Yeah. I haven't gotten mine yet, but I'm I'm right there and I'm super excited for it. Um but yeah, it's just it's really great to be able to to do this again. Yes, yes we're back and what a great place to visit uh here at Sunday. And as yes. always, we have a fantastic show with incredible people that are in our local community. Ooh, Guys, we're getting we're getting some a little, some a little wind. sprinkle. Yes. I don't know. Tree the trees are deciding to uh, grace us with their their water. Um, but yeah, it's gonna be a great show, and I'm super excited and just happy to be here, man. Yes. I'm gonna keep saying it, so get used to it because the Sunday <laughs> house is so spectacular. And if you haven't been, I mean, if this doesn't sell you on it, I've got nothing for you because this is just a spectacular environment with delicious food. And a great place to staycation. Yes, because remember, over the over the pandemic, over the last year, this restaurant opened, and mm -hmm. we got to bring take home. Yes. Right. We were one of the first that got to try the new menu, which was incredible, uh, which ranked it number one. As when, when uh, my wife and I decided to go out for the first time, mm -hmm. this is where we went. We sat right at that table over there, socially distanced. Romantic. And, uh, and got to try pretty much everything that we brought yeah. home. We just ordered again. Oh, my gosh. Well, the food, I was blown away. You know when a restaurant opens, you're not sure, is it going to be good? Is it, you know, going to need somewhere? It was fantastic. <laughs> like, from the first bite, I was sold. I told everybody to come. And this was one of the first places I came to because you have the space. And even if you are, you know, still a little hesitant, this is, I keep telling people, this is a great first step for you because you are socially distanced. Yes. And we have a great guest that can talk all about socially distanced. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> so we have Mr. John Brewer from Socially Distanced Supper Club joining us this morning. Thank you. Good to be here. We're so happy to have you. I mean, what he has done this year is, I mean, gives me chills to think about it. John, like, you have changed so many people's lives, kept businesses open, kept everyone well fed from their favorite restaurants because of all these efforts that you put into place. Like, immediately you jumped into action. It's been quite a ride. You know, I'm going through a lot of the pictures right now. We're going into about a year anniversary. And just to see all the restaurants, how they pivoted and how they, their, their never say die attitude that they had. They were not going to go quietly into that still night. They, they found ways to get their message across with social media. We were able to help with that. We kind of became a hub. So instead of every restaurant doing all, everything on their own, we were like, just give us a fly or let's go live or let's do a, uh, a flash mob. And the restaurants and their participation and just the way it's brought the community together, uh, this is a year that I'll never forget. And even though it's been a tragic year, it's been a real growth experience and, and my connection to the community and I know everybody's connection to each other uh, has never been higher than right now. I'm just so proud to be a part of Delray Beach. Well, John, what a lot of people don't know is that you were John Brewer, the restaurant guy, before all of this. <laughs> yes, Ryan, you're absolutely right. Uh, 30 years, started off bussing tables at the old Riggins when my stepdad had the restaurant there. Uh, when I moved back here in 2010 after not stepping foot in Florida for 30 years, I graduated high school at Atlantic High School. Uh, I opened up HMF at the Breakers. 
uh, was part of Ceviche. That was where the old Falcon House, which is where Death or Glory is now, stayed on with Max's Social House there. Uh, so uh, restaurants are in my blood. And uh, I moved into commercial real estate where I do a lot of restaurant leasing right now. So, yes, I am, <laughs> I am the restaurant guy. The restaurant guy. Love it. And I'm guessing that's why you were able to move so quickly, though. You had all the connections. You knew all the players. So Ian Patterson called me, and he goes, Dude, I always see you posting on Instagram and Facebook whenever you go out, whenever you go to a restaurant. You're always posting pictures of the food, all this stuff. What can we do? And this was that week right after St. Patty's Day. And I got off the phone with them, and I started walking around my pool, pacing around, which is how I do my best thinking, <laughs> um, and thought about the catering model. I loved doing catering when I was in the restaurant business because I knew exactly how much food I needed to order. I didn't, if you, you know, I knew I needed 20 steaks. I knew I needed 10 pieces of chicken. So there was no waste. So I thought if I could relate that to the restaurants, it would give them a leg up on hiring their labor back, on their food ordering, uh, because they didn't know what to expect. They were doing 10 dinners. I remember Tim Finnegan's told me they were doing $15 worth of business right before they closed down. So we thought if we could pare the menu down, give them the fish option, uh, a steak option, a vegetarian option, and then uh, order two days in advance. So the first one we did was J&J. &J. We had, I think, barely 300 members on a Sunday, and 55 orders is what they did, and that was kind of the beginning. And then from there, we morphed into doing Facebook Lives because Facebook loves lives, and uh, we get a lot of engagement that way. So it's, it's been a process, but yes, absolutely. Well, Amanda, and you probably remember well, I think you do. It was either feels like yesterday or feels like 10 years ago, right? right? <laughs> but we thought all the restaurants would just switch all to to-go yes. and they'll be okay. Yep. And that all of a sudden wasn't the case. No. It was like, oh, there's our solution and that's right. not going to work. For so sure. it's really John's thinking yeah. that, you know, swept in and, and really saved the day. I mean, sa like seriously, saved so many businesses. And if you talk to pretty much anybody in that industry in this town, you're going to hear his name mentioned. Because, John, I mean, like, I get chills still thinking about it. You know, so many people were scrambling and self-preservation, and here he was and wanted to do more and help. And ultimately saved our town, really, because the restaurants are such a huge, important part of Delray Beach. When people mm -hmm. think of us, they think of beautiful resorts and hotels, our beach, and our restaurants. Yes, there are engines. So, yeah, and I just think, I mean, I tried so many new places because I would see it on Socially Distanced Supper Club, and I'm like, what's that? I didn't know that was there. And we'd try it, and we were blown away by how fabulous these places were. And I think it has really opened up a lot of business just in general for people to try new things because we all have our favorites that we go to every time we're going to dinner because you know, like, you love this thing or that thing, but it's something special to try something new. Yeah, and I think it's a big part of how we're bouncing back. Mm -hmm. You see it on Atlantic Avenue, you see these restaurants, yeah. you see even new restaurants mm -hmm. coming in. Um, and I think the socially distanced supper club and all the attention Delray Beach got yeah. is a big part of why we are bouncing back. So John, can you speak about what's next for the socially distanced supper club? Sure, so we're moving into a dinner. We're gonna start doing dinners. I think as everybody's getting vaccinated, people feeling more comfortable, uh, we're still gonna practice uh, social distancing. So we're gonna do about 50 people over at Crazy Uncle Mike's. I know he's a little bit in Boca, but we consider him Delray Beach. Uh, it's gonna be an event with Caesar's Ribs. We're just gonna basically do a reminisce kind of thing. All the big restaurants from the beginning that were part of us, Papa's Tapas, Tim Finnegan's, J&J, &J, uh, and yeah, Tim Finnegan's pretty much mentioned everybody there. So we're going to do like a reminisce dinner. We're going to have a lot of footage, a lot of photos. We're actually inviting you, Mr. Boylston, because really appreciate how you went to bat for small businesses through this pandemic, uh, really standing by these restaurants and, and, and all the small businesses here. And uh, uh, to Amanda's point, I think, yeah, we're going to start moving into more retail to really get retail and, and all the small businesses that are out there back on the map because uh, they really do need our support right now. Because when we have John on, we like to talk about Del Rey. Because yes. this is Del Rey Morning Live. That's right. But the Socially Distanced Supper Club was covered nationally. Yes. National news. Yes. And, and then sparked other Socially Distanced Supper Clubs all over the United States. John, can you tell us a little bit about that, that journey? Yeah, so when, when uh, the Kerry Sanders interview came out, we started getting bombarded with people that were in the same frame of mind as we were. How do we help out our restaurants? How do we help out our small businesses? So we just basically came up with like a template. This is what you need to do. Get your membership up. Once you get your membership up, convince your first restaurant. Use all of the materials that we have to maybe convince them that they should be part of this. So 
The other day I was typing, uh, trying to get something to come up, and I typed social, and I saw like all these social <laughs> I'm like, oh my goodness. And they're all using our logos and everything, and that was fine. You know, we, we, we never were looking at this uh, in any other way but to, to try to help as many restaurants out there as fast as we could. So uh, I don't even know how a lot of these other ones are doing. They're there. Um, but I know how we're doing here in South Florida, and we're doing really well. Uh, we've got 16,000 on our way to 17,000 locally here in Delray Beach. And if you count all of our South Florida chapters, which is West Palm uh, and, and um, uh, Lake Worth, uh, we're up to over 30,000. Wow. So it's a, it's a great little foundation of people that love restaurants and uh, love our small businesses here in, in South Florida. All right, for those uh, of our viewers that are at home and aren't following Socially Distant Supper Club, I don't know where you've been this last year. <laughs> don't know. Uh, don't know. But uh, what, where, can, where can I go to find out more information? Where's the be best uh, platform to follow you on? Thanks, Ryan. Absolutely. So if you're in Delray Beach, obviously the original is Socially Distant Supper Club. There's no Delray Beach. There's no anything else to go with it. If you're down in Fort Lauderdale, we have a Fort Lauderdale chapter. Uh, socially Distant is spelled out for ours. For the other ones, we've kind of abbreviated to SDSC. Also West Palm, uh, but yeah, just go there and look us up. We try to put a lot of engaging, fun content out there, which is kind of, I think, what differentiated us from a lot of the people that were trying to help, and God bless them all for to go. We tried to create more of a pull environment instead of pushing yeah. and saying, here, you know, mm -hmm. this restaurant's offering this special, these guys are offering this. It was me going in, and like yesterday, I sat down with Marcello Rossano, who's got the cutest little Italian camper that he's putting out, the most amazing pizzas. He's over at Saltwater Brewery. And he's just such an infectious spirit. He's just such an awesome guy. And really, that's what we do when we dine out. You know, the food is definitely a big part of it, but it's how we get, how we feel coming out of there. It's the mm -hmm. hospitality. You know, how does that, how, how do we get greeted at the front door? Uh, does the server remember what we had last time? Do they, do they, you know, take care and, and suggesting things to us? And, uh, you know, just, just Delray Beach is, 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 is doing a great job at it. Well, it really is all about the experience, and sure. Mr. Burr, you have created a completely new experience, mm -hmm. and uh, we're so excited that it was here in Delray Beach, and uh, Delray Beach proud, right? Yep. And, so. I, I don't know if this would have worked anywhere <laughs> else. You know, the sense of community yeah. here in Delray Beach and the way everybody loves their restaurants here, uh, you know, it's our number one form of entertainment here in Delray mm -hmm. Beach. Well, uh, maybe for the exception of the beach. Um, <laughs> but, but yeah, the restaurants here are what, what people come for. And if we lose that, we lose a big part of our personality and a big part of our soul. And so thank you to everybody out there who's been going to our restaurants and supporting, whether you felt comfortable dining in or whether it was more of a to-go experience. Every order that you placed helped keep these restaurants alive. So thank you, everybody out there, sincerely, from the bottom of my heart. And thank you again, John. Thank you. Well, great. Well, we're going to keep it going with yes. stories and restaurants and new things coming to Delray Beach. And uh, next we have Jason Emmett. We're going to learn a little bit more about him and his involvement with Sunday House. And we have a beautiful video that shows a little bit more before we get to talk with him live here in Delray Morning Live. Like many people had been here for, um, I had been here for a wedding. I had been here for the brunch. My name is Jason Emmett. I uh, own the company that operates the Sunday House. loved it. I loved the property. I've been in the restaurant business for, well, my whole life. My background is in my family's business at Duffy's Sports Grill. I stepped away from my role as president of that company to go on and pursue some entrepreneurial endeavors, of which uh, the Sunday House has become uh, one of those. The history here is something that does make it special. Having been built in 1902, and that it's still that same structure. You know, that it's still, it's still the house that was built by the then mayor of, of Delray Beach does add a lot of character and charm to the property that you can still see what the world looked like more than 120 years ago at this point. I think people have forgotten that it was here. Um, it is tucked away. And for years, I think it was operated with a priority towards events and people sort of forgot it was available for dinner and for regular dining. We've put a real priority on the restaurant itself. The Sunday House has a full acre of gardens with tables scattered all over the property, so it really is an ideal venue for a pandemic and post-pandemic world in which that will still be, I think, part of the feeling of our guests. Even when it's full here, it doesn't feel full. To me, you sort of forget you're in Delray Beach. Uh, you feel like you're in some sort of a tropical landscape. 
I see people walking around constantly, you know, just looking around, just exploring, because you can almost get lost here. Guests can stay here. We have 11 rooms that are available all week long. It is a hotel as well as a restaurant, and it's not just a wedding venue or a Sunday brunch. Though it is those things, it's much, much more than that as well. That was excellent, and and now we are joined with, uh, by Jason Emmett Morning, here guys. at Sunday. Up. Morning. Well, thank you for having us. I mean, you've heard me gush about it for the past oh however long we've been <laughs> live now. This is such a spectacular place to come and stay and eat and hang out and wander through the garden. I mean, how often can you say you get to wander through the koi ponds and over the bridge? I mean, <laughs> right? <laughs> Well, if you live in Delray, you can do it anytime you want. As a matter of fact, Sunday's been around for a really long time. Like the the buildings that we're sitting are some uh, sitting by are some of the oldest buildings in Delray Beach. Jason, how did how did you get involved with Sunday House? Yeah, no, it's a, a interesting backstory. So I'm uh, friendly with one of the principals at uh, PEB who uh, bought the land, and they're planning a major development around the Sunday House, but. The Sunday House itself, as you mentioned, is, is historic and, and as such, you know, first of all, can't be developed and shouldn't be redeveloped. And so they reached out to me originally uh, to help them manage it for them. And then when the pandemic really uh, hit its, its, its depths, um, you know, they, they said that, listen, it's, it's not really their model to keep it open and keep it operating. So I uh, came back to them and, and uh, offered to take it over myself. And I had formed a company that was uh, building restaurants um, and, and, uh, and operating restaurants. So we put this into the portfolio and, and it's really become the, the shining star of what we're doing here. And, and uh, I'm just I'm thrilled that we were given the opportunity to, to operate this place because it really is a special, uh, special environment here. It is a special environment and it holds a special part in a lot of people's hearts, you know, mm -hmm. from, from anniversaries to birthdays, and weddings, to, to and weddings, to mm -hmm. chamber parties, yep. which I've been to a few here. <laughs> yeah. Uh, when you think of Sunday House, what first comes to mind, Amanda? I don't want to leave. I mean, I know that wasn't really like the right answer, but no, it's just, it's such an inviting place. Like you feel like you're home. Like you just feel like you want to have a drink during happy hour, which they have a new menu or dinner or whatever is the brunch. I mean, the brunch is, I think it's probably the brunch actually. My, my grandma used to love coming to the brunch and um, it just, yeah, it just, you want to come, you want to kick your feet up and you just want to relax. Yes. Yeah. So Sunday's had that reputation for a, lo a long time, Jason. What's your vision for, for a Sunday house? It's, it's a good question because I think you've just highlighted it, right? Uh, most people, when you say the Sunday house, have either sort of forgotten about it a little bit, uh, that was the impression we got right away, or if they remember it, it's because of the famous Sunday brunch, yeah. uh, commonly confused with the name, right? <laughs> but, um, or the, the weddings and, and other events that, that we've all been to here. I've been to a wedding mm -hmm. here, I had been to the Sunday brunch, but what we've really tried to do is remind the community that it is here and that there's a, a restaurant here every night of the week. Um, and I think that that was part of what we saw initially, that that wasn't really a priority before we got involved. And so we've tried to bring in a new sort of culinarily inspired menu and, and put some effort behind the, the dinner beyond just the brunch while keeping the, the specialness of that, that, that brunch on Sundays that people do know and remember and, and trying to keep that going and, and while all adding the other uh, day parts. Well, Jason, I'm sure you guys are, are nowhere near finished, but I'll tell you, you've done that. Yeah. You've already Absolutely. taken Sunday House in this last year and turned it from a place that you go to for anniversaries and mm -hmm. special occasions to a place you go to on a Tuesday night. Yeah. Well, I appreciate that. I mean, that's, that's been the goal, and I, I, I agree. I think we still have work to do. Um, you know, it's not easy reminding people that something exists that maybe they forgot about for several years, so we still have our work cut out for us, but I'm glad you feel that way because it's... It definitely feels like it's trending in the right direction. Um, people are starting to come out again. I mean, look, the, the easing of the pandemic also helps. We're obviously not totally out of the woods there, um, but it feels like people are starting to become more comfortable with dining out. Um, and the outdoor space here really helps that we have a full acre of land that we can spread out tables on. So 
Um, we're seeing people becoming a bit more comfortable uh, going out in general, and that seems to be helping. And people seem to be flocking to Florida from other states. Um, so all the winds feel like they're at our back. We just have to continue the momentum. And, and our, our goal is just, you know, it's kind of simple, right? The food's got to be great, and, mm -hmm. and the service has to be great. And we have the, the benefit of this, this beautiful scenery here that, mm -hmm. that uh, we can't take the credit for, but we'll certainly take advantage of and, and, uh, and try to provide a really memorable experience for people, uh, you know, as they start to come back out into the world. And I have to say, one of my favorite experiences here was Delray Fashion Week this year. Mm -hmm. We had, for those of you who missed it, you need to look online. It was spectacular. Everyone got to sit socially distanced at tables and enjoy the food and drinks. And the models roamed through the garden. I mean, it was so incredible. And I think that that's an experience everyone should get to have and at least once, if not every night, like we said. I mean, they have, once again, a really great new happy hour menu um, so you could come and have some light bites or a drink and um, and really just calm down. Yes, and that's what I want to learn more about because Jason referenced all of the action outside of this building yeah. right now. A lot of new development, mm -hmm. a lot of uh, refurbishment of historic yeah. homes outside of Sunday. It's been in the newspaper, I feel like, every day this yes. past week. Super exciting. Yes. But Jason, what's happening inside Sunday House that's exciting? Right, I can't speak to the outside stuff. That's not my world. Uh, I'm not a developer. But um, no, inside, what, we, what we've been trying to do is, first, the first thing we did is bring in some really top gun culinary talent to just mm -hmm. bring a, a fresh spin on, on the menu and, and take some of the items that, that were, you know, the favorites of, of people that were still coming to the Sunday House and give them a, a more of a, maybe a fresh spin and, and some creative uh, twists. Um, then we, um, at, at Suzanne Boyd's uh, urging, by the way, who's been helping us uh, in, in behind the scenes, uh, was really her recommendation that we bring back a, a happy hour. That they used to have one here many years ago and, and had gone by the wayside. And so we, we did that. We brought back a happy hour with, you know, half price drinks and some bar bites, $5 bar, bar bites, to, to again remind the community that you can come here and and safely enjoy a um, an experience that maybe you wouldn't have thought of before we have so much again space that that you know we brought in some live music to complement that space and to complement the bar bites and and the happy hour scene and and it's it's been a uh, a surprisingly fast uh, growth in that in that time period that that four to six time period that we didn't know what to expect. You know, we don't know if, if people are going to come out for something like that or not. And, and the reception from the community has been very strong. And, and that's been a theme here that uh, it felt like, you know, the, the real goal with the Sunday House here, if we're going to be successful, it's going to be while being a part of the greater Delray community. And it, it felt like maybe they had pulled back from that in the past, the previous uh, administration, I call them. And we want to sort of reverse that. and, and and re-enmesh the Sunday House back into Del Rey, where, where it really belongs. It's, it's, it's just such a part of this town. So, Well, we love to hear that. Mm -hmm. And you know our previous guest, John Brewer, loves to hear that. <laughs> and uh, listen, John's got quite a, quite a resume in the restaurant business, but so do yes. you. And uh, so I'm going to put you on the spot here. Oh, boy. <laughs> all, all your many years in the restaurant business, what's your favorite dish on the Sunday House <laughs> oh. menu? Wow. <laughs> you know, it's, um, that's a tough one because it's, there's so many items on this menu. What I tell people, and this is going to sound like a very political answer, <laughs> but what I tell people that ask me that, or what, not necessarily what my favorite item is, but what they should order, mm -hmm. is take a chance. Because there's a lot of items on this menu that even I maybe necessarily wouldn't have tried because I have, you know, my, my favorite things, right? I, mm -hmm. I, I, of course, I, I love the, the filet, the salmon, the whatever, but but I, I would encourage anyone that does decide to, to dine with us to try something that maybe you wouldn't think, oh, that sounds a little unusual or interesting. Try it. The food is really excellent. And I'm saying that, obviously, I'm biased, but I'm also not cooking the food. So <laughs> I feel like I can say that. I'm, yeah. I'm allowed to, to brag about the food because it's not me cooking it. Uh, you wouldn't want that. Um, so I, I, that, that's my, my sort of roundabout non-answer to your question. <laughs> <laughs> that was a very good roundabout non-answer. Because <laughs> I feel like we did actually get something in there. Yes. We, we learned the filet and the salmon. He did sneak that in, so make sure you, you caught that one. <laughs> well, well I, I, li I like the answer because yeah, it's, you know, come to a hundred-year-old destination mm -hmm. in Delray Beach and 
Be try risky new. and be yes. risky and try something new. Take a chance, exactly. Yes, and take a chance. Uh, I love that. Well, Jason, thank you so thank much you. Thank for you. being on our show today and, uh, and inviting us to your beautiful, beautiful new restaurant. Anytime. Here at thank Sunday you for House. your time. <laughs> I love it here. I don't think I'm going to leave. <laughs> I don't think I'm going to. I just like hole up right here. You, you can't stay here. I can't. I gotta, I gotta go. Anyone have a new shirt? <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to figure out. <laughs> so you can't stay here. You know oh, that, right? I can't right? stay here. No, we are still live. So oh, we are still yeah, live. I'm so can't distracted just stay and just Sunday like house. I'm in La La Land, guys. I feel I feel like I'm like in Zen. Like this is like a after yoga session. I'm just like so relaxed. I I just want to sit right here and not leave. So sorry, Jason. I'm gonna be your your resident right here. Okay. I mean, it is just such a great. While spot. Amanda's gonna sit here at this table and not leave, I'll be checking in at one of their many rooms <laughs> like a normal person. You're smarter than me. I'm just gonna hang out at the table, and he's like, no, I'm gonna rent a room. Oh, we got a surprise guest. Oh, hello, sir. What's happening? Mr. Sean Hall. I uh, couldn't let you guys have all the fun today. No. I mean, why Why would I let that go by? And I like your official Y-pad badge. Well, it must mean we're talking about something fun. Very I am here on official Y-pad business. Um, as part of the leadership committee, just wanted to remind people that we have the best young professionals association in the state here in Delray Beach. Yes. We are always doing amazing things. Like tonight, we're actually having a happy hour here at the Sunday House. All right. Turns out. So we're there, really excited there. for that. Um, tickets have already sold out because of just... Why not? I, I mean, it's YPAD, so yeah. you're not going to get those tickets early. <laughs> but wanted to highlight a couple things that we do have going on. Uh, on April 24th at our uh, event at the Hyatt, we are doing a sip and swab event with the Gift of Life Bone Marrow mm. Registry. So you can come out, have a couple cocktails, get swabbed, maybe help somebody out that needs a bone marrow transplant. All right. We're always That's looking amazing. to do fun things to get involved in the community. We got beach cleanups that we're doing. Um, even in tonight's event, we're actually going to have a letter writing campaign to send to our troops overseas to give them a little bit of encouragement. So we're always looking to do those fun things and we encourage everybody under 40 to go onto the chamber website and find out about all of the YPAD events that we have coming up. We've got a fun happy hour every single month. So go online, check us out, and follow us on social media where we are all over with fun stuff. Yeah, they are. And I love <laughs> the fact that it's networking, but in such a fun, cool way, and you guys do so much to help our community. So and it's engaging and helpful at the same time. classic Delray Beach fashion, which yes. I think is great because some of these young professionals might be new to our area, mm -hmm. and that kind of introduces them to the way Delray works, right? We mm -hmm. have fun, but we give back. Yeah, Absolutely. and we get to have fun at you know, great locations like the Sunday House. So. Yeah. Yeah. Always look for us. We're always doing fun and amazing things. All right. Absolutely. So sold out. Sold out. So sold you out. You come this time. So you yep. got to get on the list early. Not even like two tickets. For, <laughs> well, two I'm going to be left. here all day. You know, yeah. uh, I, I only have so much time left before I can't come to these anymore. Oh, you know, no. I, so maybe I can be <laughs> squeezed in. I mean, give me a call. We'll He's talk. Begging. But, He's begging, you know, Sean. you know, maybe we can, you know, we'll talk to Stephanie. Maybe she'll make an exception for you. <laughs> Uh, but we do have other fun chamber things going on. Ooh, All right. While I'm here, here, I figured as an ambassador of the chamber as well, I would talk about some fun things that we have going on. <laughs> um, so this Friday, April 2nd at 8 a.m., uh, we have an update for our community partners. The city of Delray Beach, the Delray Beach CRA, and the Delray Beach DDA, as well as the chamber, are coming together. And we have a guest speaker named Dave Ehrenberg, who is the Palm Beach County State Attorney. Fun story about Dave Ehrenberg is he was on Morning Joe earlier this week, and he's going to be with us at the chamber at the end of the week. Wow. All right. So we're pulling some clout around that's here. That's right. That's right. <laughs> so that's really fun. Um, something I'm personally really excited about, um, our nonprofit council, which is doing amazing things and helping a lot of the nonprofits here in the area. We are having a webinar called Telling Your Story in Social Media. Oh. So that's going to be Tuesday, April 6th at 1130. It's going to be at the chamber. Um, limited to 70 people. You can register at delraybeach.com slash events. Um, speakers are going to be Chloe Texter and Diana Rosalyn from Be Like Brit. And then this guy, Sean Hall of Viral Vision Marketing, will also be there doing some stuff as well. I, I heard he's a dynamic speaker. Um, it's actually going to be at the Arts Garage. So nice. go to uh, delraybeach.com slash events, register to that, because again, much like YPAD, they sell out, especially something like this with the Nonprofit Council. It's going to be awesome. And then speaking of awesome things to do, we are never at the, uh, the loss of awesome things to do here at the Chamber. Oh. We have the Affair of the Arts coming up, 
which I'm sure everybody is super excited about. That's going to be That's April 9th through the 11th at the Boynton Beach Mall. Basically, what's going to be is a miniature version of the Delray Affair. Mm -hmm. So we've got a lot of the same vendors, a lot of the same artists, all of the fun will be taking place at the Boynton Beach Mall uh, April 9th through the 11th. And this is on the exterior of the mall? The exterior right. of the mall, in okay. the parking lot. We'll be set up. Um, it'll have the same look, feel of everything. Um, it's going to be a really, really good time, and it's something that I personally have looked forward to for a very long time. Yes. I've been going to the Delray Affair since I probably moved to Delray seven mm -hmm. or eight yes. years ago. So it's going to be a really good time. Mark your calendars for that. And then I have this thing called Delray Morning Live that we do <laughs> every Wednesday at 8.30. With you two. So. Are you promoting our show on our show? Uh, yes. Well, I am because. Are you allowed to do that? Is that okay to do? Well, I don't because know a lot of people don't know that if you want to be a guest on the show, you can be a guest. We yep. are booking guests actively right now. So just reach out to us, email us at chamber at delraybeach.com. We have that going on. And then we have one more fun thing we have a webinar coming up Maximize Your Chamber Membership oh. Committees, Roundtables, and Councils is going to be Tuesday, April 20th at 1230. That'll be via Zoom. Um, so go to delraybeach.com slash events to sign up for that to find out how you can get the most out of your chamber wow. membership. I'm also on the membership committee, so I can tell you, <laughs> I speak to a lot of them, and you get out of the chamber what you put into it. Absolutely. Join a leads group, come to a networking event, go to the webinars, host a luncheon. So many options that you can do to maximize your chamber membership to get the most out of it. So um, that's all I've got, so I'm going to hop off. But you two did a great <laughs> Thank job today. You, bro. Um, we love having you always. So see me later about that uh, iPad thing. That's right. <laughs> and also, it's First Friday Art Walk. So for people who are looking for a fun thing to do this Friday, there's Art Walk. I know at the Arts Warehouse, you have to RSVP to be able to mm -hmm. come through and see all the incredible local artists. But it's just such a great thing to get to support local art. and. Have a fun time. Out. Starting to feel like Delray again, right? It is. Everything's starting. Everything's starting to open back <laughs> up. It's a little different, yeah. you know, but I think we're okay with and we're it. Still and still being cautious. Yes. And wearing a mask, you have to make sure um, if you come to Art Walk, masks are mandatory. So. Yeah. yeah. Right. And we have Del Delray Affair happening yep. in our in our sister city, yep. Affair of the Arts, which is great because it still happens. Yes. And, uh, and we'll be super excited when it comes back to Delray in, in, uh, in 2022. Unbelievable. Wow. Right? Well, it's going to be here like tomorrow, so you know, <laughs> you don't have to wait that long. <laughs> well, this has been such a beautiful morning. I want to say probably our prettiest show ever. Yes. <laughs> and we have Savor the Avenue coming up, which yes. we're going to go live from, which we're really excited about. And uh, that's probably... That's probably just around the corner, right? Oh just my a few gosh, weeks. Yeah. Here. So thank wait. you for joining us, and we'll see you next week on Delray Morning Live.